Hey everybody, Movie Reviewer Next Door here, and I'm back with another video, and this time I am doing a bit of a, an update on movies I have. Um, I already did one for my birthday, that was specifically just stuff I got on my birthday. This stuff is um, what I bought in the last two months, or two or so months. So I've got a bunch of bags here mostly from thrift shops or Dollar Tree or Dollar General. So I guess I'll start I'll start with one of I'll I'll start with thrift shops, I guess. So this all this stuff. So got these two were from Goodwill. So I found The Illusionist, which I have not seen yet. I have it on my watch list, just haven't gotten around to seeing it yet. And I also found The Grinch, the the uh, remake, I guess you call it. I forgot who even plays the, yeah, Benedict Cumberbatch, Cumberbatch as The Grinch. From Illumination, which Illumination is a company I'm not big on. They did Despicable Me, and they did Minions, and the Super Mario Brothers movies, which I haven't seen. But Despicable Me 1, I think, is a good kids movie. Second is okay, and the third one was kind of... But yeah. Um, these are... These ones are from uh, a thrift shop near me. I am trying to remember what it was called. I can't remember what it's called, but um, there's a Father's Revenge with Brian Dennehy. I've heard, yeah, from the director of 15 Minutes and 15 Days in the Valley, John Hertzfield. Um, he also worked on... Um, he directed Escape Plan 3, I think, which is interesting. But I saw the plot and I was interested in it. Ron Silver plays the villain. I found this 8-movie pack. And I'm curious because sometimes you can find movies on these that aren't available in any other way. But you got The Prophecy... Uh, Equilibrium Transfers Imposter, which I haven't heard of, but I like the cast. Total Recall 2070 Machine Dreams Cipher, which I love Cipher. Fortress, I love Fortress. And Convict 762. And this is from um, Echo Bridge, an older release from them. Memoirs of a Geisha. Definitely a movie I've been wanting to check out for a bit. Very controversial that it's a PG-13. Uh -oh. I had this on my watch list, Dying to Belong. I love Hilary Swank. And it's apparently kind of a, a mystery type film. So definitely like to check that out. And Amelie. I have... Not seen this in forever. I remember really enjoying it. I have the poster over there. I'll have to give it another look sometime because I love uh, Audrey Toto and Machu Kasovitz. Um, I have to move some stuff. Uh, I'm very unorganized. <laughs> Uh, this is all stuff from the Crisis Center thrift shop that I have near me. This was completely mint in package. I took off the packaging because I'm impatient. Platoon. I still have not seen Platoon. Sorry about that. It Chapter 2. If I was going to buy it to get the movie or watch it, I at least would want it to be cheap. And also in here, yeah, It Chapter 2 movie, Blu-ray and DVD. It Chapter 2 bonus features, and for some reason, 
there's also Harley Quinn Birds of Prey, which I was also kind of look kind of wanting to check out curious because of people's reactions to it. Um Red Rage. Not sure what to think of this, but saw Steven Burkhoff was in it. And the director is Savas D. Michael, who directed American or Original Gangster, which I do really like that film. So I definitely won't I'm curious how this will be. Coco. Haven't seen it. Gonna check it out at some point. Peter Pan. Love this movie. Definitely want to give it another watch sometime. Bambi. I remember enjoying it. I don't remember much about it, though. This was back when Disney movies were 70 minutes long. Sing, also from Illumination. I will say, I don't hate it as much as a lot of people do, but I can understand people not being super into it. I have one 4K, and that's for Trolls, which I had on my watch list because I was like, maybe I'll check that out. And the first film in the Librarian series with Noah Wiley also has... uh. Kyle McLaughlin, who I think is the villain. Um, Jane Curtin, Olympia Dukakis, Bob Newhart. Uh, these films, uh, sh they released on TNT, the uh, TV station. And there's three of them. I can't remember the other names, but I do want to go through them. They're on Tubi as well, but you get all these cool special features and it's uh, an extended edition of the film. So I'm guessing it was probably a direct-to-video film series that they kind of cut some stuff from so that they could air it on TV. It's it's probably not like R-rated stuff, but like probably a couple words they couldn't say or scenes that were a bit too much, but look looks like fun. This is from a thrift shop that I went to uh, after my uh, dentist appointment. Um, Found some cool stuff there. 22 Jump Street. I don't have 21 Jump Street yet. I was hoping to find 21 there, but I couldn't. Um, Dying of the Light. I do want to do a video about this and the director's cut because I haven't seen the director's cut. Apparently the director's cut called Dark um, improves a lot of things from this because this wasn't the director's cut. This is directed by Paul Schrader, written and directed by him. And uh, also Anton Yelchin is in this. I, I know Nicolas Cage is in it. You can see his name. Anton Yelchin, the young actor from um, the Star Trek films, I think, and Green Room and the Fright Night remake, uh, who died, I think, at like 27 or something. It's a freak accident. He seemed to be an up-and-coming actor, so it. I was really upset when it happened. But I'll definitely have to give this a give this a watch as well as the director's cut. Babylon AD, directed by Matthew Kasovitz, who also directed Gothica, which is one of my favorite Halle Berry films, one of my favorite performances from her. So I definitely wanted to give a chance to this film. Even though I've heard very bad things, I'm still up to giving a film a chance. Oh, yeah, I do have 21 Jump Street. <laughs> what the fuck am I talking about? Yeah, 21 Jump Street. Ticker. The Steven Seagal, technically Steven Seagal movie, where um, the director's cut, from what I've heard, the director's cut of this that Albert Pion uploaded to YouTube or something, um before he died, which, rest in peace, Albert Pion, um, apparently Steven Seagal's performance here was pretty good, from what I've heard. But also from what I've heard, Nas, who is second build on the front of this, uh, is only in the film, like, for two scenes. Apparently he dies, I don't know, but this cast is impressive. You've got 
Tom Sizemore, Dennis Hopper, Steven Seagal, Jamie Presley, Nas, Peter Green, like, pretty good cast. That's one thing Albert Pion usually could deliver on. But yeah. One of Angelina Jolie's first bigger roles, Cyborg 2. Um, I forgot what the subtitle was. It was like something mirror, like shattered mirror or something like that. But um, I have not seen the first Cyborg yet, so definitely got to check that out. And then that. One of my favorite war films of all time, Enemy at the Gates. Glad I could find it, even if it's just a DVD with no, no real special features other than a behind the scenes feature out, which is still cool. Um, Great cast, Yosef Fiennes, Jude Law, Rachel Weisz, Bob Hoskins, Ed Harris, Ron, per Ron Perlman, directed by Jean-Jacques Anod, um, music by James Horner, love James Horner's music. This is a film I had on my watch list, Inescapable. U.S. Seals 2. I have not seen this. I know it's directed by Isaac Florentine, and it's put up by New Image. I have U.S. Seals 3 now as well, so gotta find U.S. Seals 1 and then do a trilogy review. And I've been really looking forward to this, for sure, because I've heard so many great things about it. Searching. And I recently did a video on the, um, on, um, Open Windows. And I'm really into that genre of film, the screen life genre, where it's all on a computer screen. So definitely going to check this out. Um, and this is another trip I took to that thrift shop. So you've got... Also a film by Jean-Jacques Anode, just like Enemy at the Gates, Day of the Falcon. Had this on the watch list because of Antonio Banderas, but you also got Tahar Rahim, Mark Strong, Frida Pinto, uh, Riz Ahmed, Corey Johnson, Eric Abwani, who is in a lot of Brian De Palma films. Definitely want to check this out. Looks like a fun war epic Earlier Pierce Brosnan films, Detonator and Detonator 2, Night Watch. Um, I think these were TV films. Um, excuse me. Um, definitely want to check out earlier Pierce Brosnan stuff. Loving the hair for Detonator 2. <laughs> Been told this is a funny movie. Guarding Tess. Love to see younger Nicolas Cage stuff, so definitely can't wait to watch that. This is an awesome thriller, phone booth, very intense, very short, sweet and to the point. Definitely a worthy watch. The score, it's a heist movie. Robert De Niro, Edward Norton, Marlon Brando, I think his last on-screen performance, even though I'm not huge on Marlon Brando, that's still interesting. Australia, directed by Baz Luhrmann, who did Great Gatsby, Moulin Rouge. Um, I've never seen this film. I have wanted to give it a chance ever since. I, I think I saw a bit of it when I was... Um, we we used to have a beach condo. I mean, my mom and my brother are working on another one right now, but um, we used to have one that we'd go to for vacationing, and I think this was on TV at one point. So I don't I don't think I watched all of it. I probably lost interest because the this wasn't the type of film I searched out back when I was younger. But still, um. It'll definitely, definitely at least be a pretty movie. Another gem of a thriller, Pacific Heights. 
directed by John Schlesinger, who did Marathon Man. Um, has some fucked up moments, um, but they work in the context of the film. Um, Michael Keaton, as always, is a very effective villain. Melanie Griffith and Matthew Modine are actually not that bad in this. Matthew Modine and both Matthew Modine and Melanie Griffith are act actors that I'm like, eh, you can take them or leave them. Matthew Modine has his moments when he was in Flowers for Algernon. I think he perfectly played that role. Perfectly. Both when he's mentally... I guess the term is retarded. But when he's mentally retarded and when he's the genius, I think he played both of them very well. And Melanie Griffith can work when you give her something to do. But they actually work here. And I do... I I think my experience with working with houses and like um renting out houses with my mom like um I think this hits a bit harder for me but I do think it would work for anybody. Finally got this, The Da Vinci Code. I have the sequels Angels and Demons and Inferno, so been waiting to get this. Apparently it's really good. But yeah. countermeasures with Michael Dudikoff for for the collection because I like Michael Dudikoff. Cocoon and Cocoon the Return. Apparently in Cocoon the Return they got pretty much all of the original cast that was still alive from the last one or from the end of the first one to return which is awesome. Um but yeah, I have seen the first film, directed by Ron Howard. The second one isn't, but still, um, I do want to see both of both of these at some point. Um, the first one is a real gut punch of a film in the best way. It it'll make you laugh, it'll make you cry, that whole thing. But yeah, definitely recommend Cocoon to people who haven't seen it. And I found this, the. This collection of Agatha Christie's Poirot, it says complete collection, which it's not. Um, David Suchet's Poirot has had many, many seasons, so four of these is not enough. But still, you've got The Murder of Roger Ackroyd, Lord Edgware Dies, Murder in Mesopotamia, and Evil Under the Sun. Maybe these are only the episodes or the ones that were aired on AE in America because this is a British thing but still nice to find that and this is the last uh, thrift shop thing I think yeah Hollow 18 had this on my watch list apparently it's a good uh, found footage film Ryan Robbins is in it. I like him. Sorry about that. Red line. I love these quotes. Uh, hot cars and hotter women. I have not seen this. I am aware of it. And I had it on my watch list. It looks kind of funny. Let me take that off. That's I hate I hate when people leave these stickers on the movies and put and sell them or put them in the thing. Sorry for the delay. Just my weird OCD thing. Tender Trap. Been looking to get some more Frank Sinatra films, so saw it. Stuck to my nails. <laughs> and a movie I've been wanting to have on disc for a while. 45. This is a fantastic drama, in my opinion. I think Gary Lennon does a great job with the writing and direction. I think the cast are all very impressive because you got Mila Jovovich, Angus McFadden. Stephen Dorff, Aisha Tyler, Sarah Strange, all doing great jobs. Um, Mila Jovovich gives one of her best performances to date. Um, 
legitimately does a fantastic job here. Nobody does revenge like a woman. This isn't an action film, by the way. If you're going to watch this and you think it's an action revenge film, that's not what this is. I think you'll be sorely disappointed. It is a drama. I guess I'll do Dollar Tree. Good Kill with Ethan Hawke, directed by Andrew Nichol, who did Gattaca, and um, In Time. Phobias. I've never heard of this, but I saw that it was an uh, anthology, and I'm very con uh, curious about it. Um, Co-executive producer Macy Gray, the singer. Executive producers Matt Bettinelli, Open, and Tyler Gillett, who did um, Ready or Not, which is interesting. And Camila Bell is one of the directors, which is interesting, since I usually know her for acting. I'm going to try my best to fit all this stuff up here. Men at Work, Charlie Sheen and Emilio Estevez, brothers acting together, which is cool. I have not seen this film written and directed by Emilio Estevez. I've heard it's very funny. Brothers by Blood. I, I like, I, I want to see if Joel Kinnaman can be good in another film, so I want to check it out. Freedom Fighters, The Ray, DC animated movie. Never seen it before. Apparently, this is DC's only openly gay superhero or something, and I was curious how bad they fuck it up. And direct, starring Russell Tove, who's gay. Because apparently you can only have a gay guy play a gay superhero. Um, Parallel. I really adore this film. Uh, I actually agree with these reviews. One of the strongest sci-fi offerings of the year. I don't remember what came out that year, but you got a strong cast. Um great premise of parallel worlds and stuff and I think it's very very well executed and doesn't look cheap or anything okay. The Last Train random movie from Echo Bridge but um Lou Diamond Phillips is in it, and it kind of looks like he's a villain or something. Um, but yeah, look looks from what I read on the back, it sounds very interesting. Something I had on my watch list: Boudica, Rise of the Warrior Queen, epic battle scenes, and passionate fighting spirit. Geek Legion of Doom apparently said that. I I watch Geek Legion of Doom. Interesting. Hmm. I guess you can put movie critics on YouTube's quotes there. Art of Self-Defense. Heard this was really funny. Definitely want to give it a chance. I usually like it when Jesse Eisenberg and Imogen Poots work together. Beirut. Have this on my watch list as well. Battle of the Damned or L'Attack L'Attack des Damnes or whatever. I uh, wanted to get this for the uh, Dolph Lundgren collection. Apparently it's a lot of fun. Or at least stupid fun. 
Wonder Woman Bloodlines. Been into collecting these DC unit DC uh films. Yip Man Two. These are all from Dollar Tree, by the way. You got Yip Man Two for dollar twenty five. Definitely want to check that out. Found this strange anime movie, uh, Satellite Girl and Milk Cow. Looks strange and up my alley. And the last one is Dollar General and Family Dollar stuff. Give me a second. So I've got the Family Dollar stuff. They had a sale on um, on uh, movies. <laughs> so I got this, which looked odd, Deadly Inferno. I know nothing about it. Johnny Handsome, which I haven't seen. Um, and three new-ish movies. Black Phone, definitely wanted to give it a look. I, I don't mind, um, I don't mind the director. It's weird that the director isn't at the very bottom here. It, it I think it's, yeah, director about you, Sinister, and Doctor Strange. I didn't watch Doctor Strange, but. Joker, Joaquin Phoenix, Rob De Niro, I have not seen it yet, and Dog with Channing Tatum, and for the Dollar General stuff, for Elvis Presley films, definitely been wanting to check out more of his stuff from the past, so. Gidget, the complete series. I love Sally Field. Definitely wanted to pick this up. Amelia. Directed by Mira Nair, which that name does sound familiar. I think it's a female director. Curious how they'll portray the story of uh, Amelia Earhart. The artist... Starring Jean Dujardin and Berenice Bejo. Um, I think this one, be yeah, this one, Best Picture. Definitely want to see if an older bid Best Picture winner would actually be good. Had this on my watch list. Leaves of Grass. It's from Millennium Entertainment. Penn and oh, Penn and Teller's BS seventh season. Been slowly finding all the seasons. Um, funny thing, this does not include. It says the seventh season, and it doesn't say all of them because it doesn't include the Vatican episode. I wonder why the Vatican episode isn't in here. Makes me think they're hiding something. I know people might think this is a meme, but Grumpy Cat's Worst Christmas Ever, I had to get it because I actually did really enjoy the movie. I'll definitely have to do a review on it at some point. It's one of the best Lifetime movies I've ever seen, and it's not even a normal type of Lifetime movie. And, uh, Walden, been very curious about this, so it was nice to find it. But yeah. That is everything. Uh, that is my update for today. So, um, if y'all saw any movies that you recognize or liked that you want me to review from this, definitely let me know. Um, if you have any recommendations outside of this, put those down there as well. And uh, move over to your next door.